Setting up integrals over non-rectangular regions is kind of an art form. So let's, let's do a simple example to just indicate the intricacies of the process. If we have this function 2x plus y and we define a region r as the region where x squared minus y is less than or equal to 1 and x squared plus y is less than or equal to 1 and we want to integrate over that r the first thing is we draw a picture to make absolutely certain we understand what the behavior is going to be. Then we think about the underlying function here. So the underlying function, if we write it simply, is the underlying function where this, equal, this is equality now is y is equal to 1 minus x squared, or rather um, y is equal to x squared minus 1. Over here, we're going to have y is equal to 1 minus x squared. And we want to draw both of those functions. So let's, let's draw this guy first. Well, x squared minus 1 is a parabola pointing upwards. And at x is equal to 0, it's negative 1. At x is equal to negative 1 or 1, it's equal to 0. So we have three points on the parabola, so we should just draw it now. So a nice parabolic shape. It goes on forever. So that's my first region, or my first line that is describing my region. And now the other guy is just the negation of that previous function. And so what I get is a parabola pointing downwards, but essentially reflecting this other guy across the x-axis. Now here the inequality, or the Inequality is actually less than or equal to. There's a less than or equal to sitting there. And this is also less than or equal to. Well, actually, this will be, uh, since I moved y, this will be greater than or equal to. And this guy is going to be less than or equal to. So I moved y in this picture. So y would be on the right hand side, so it would be greater. So, and this is the blue line, so I want everything above the blue line and below the red line. So that's this region this little I-shaped region here. Our next job is figure out the boundaries of integration. So we first pick a direction of integration. So, so let's do the direction of integration, so order of integration. is dx dy, right? So we're going to integrate first over constant y slices. And we need to figure out exactly what the boundaries of integration are, right? And it changes. You'll notice that it changes, right? So the limits, so the upper, upper and lower y limits Right, that is, all the values that my y slices can take are 1 and negative 1. Right? So all my y slices will between, be between negative 1 and 1. And the boundary is going to be very different if y is greater than or equal to 0. So what happens if y is greater than or equal to 0? Then the x limits are... And to figure out what they are, usually what you'll do is you'll fix a y slice. 
so fix on value y, and you draw the slice, and you're going to move in from the negative x direction, and you're going to see what boundaries you hit as you enter and leave the region of integration. So the boundary is here, and the next boundary is here. Well, what's this value in terms of y? I want a function, so now I want x as a function of y in order to determine that boundary. And solving this value, I'm going to get negative, well actually it's the, the red line, right? I'm going to get negative square root of 1 minus y. And over here I'm going to get the positive value, 1 minus y. So I go from negative square root 1 minus y as the lower to square root 1 minus y at the upper limit. How about y is less than or equal to 0? Well, if we draw that thing, we're going to have negative square root 1 plus y. You can verify by solving now we're solving the blue equation, right? You can solve that as a function of, or, or x as a function of y, and that's what you'll acquire. And over here we'll have 1 plus y. So the x limits are negative square root 1 plus y to square root 1 plus y. And so that essentially means that we basically, if we do this order of integration, we have to set up two different regions that we're integrating over. And so the integral over r of my fxy dx dy will be equal to, I'm just going to set this up, right? Well, the y limit is going to be from negative 1 to 1. The integral over r sub y, right? So when I fix y, there's a slice of x's determined by y. So I'm going to call that r sub y, f, x, y, dx, dy. And of course, this r sub y depends on whether this guy is above 0 or below 0. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break up this integral from 0 to 1. Now I have well-defined limits, so this will be from negative square root 1 minus y to square root 1 minus y, f, x, y, dx, dy, plus the integral from negative 1 to 1, and in this region, or negative 1 to 0. So I split up the y slices that I'm looking at, so I can fix actual limit functions. So this will be 1 plus y, this will be square root 1 plus y, and I'll have f, x, y, dx, dy. And now I plug in my function, which is 2x plus y, and I can evaluate these integrals, right? In order to do integration in that order, this is what I have to do. And now, and now this is a solvable problem, right? You can just compute. Now it's just a computation after you've set it up. Um, what about if uh, the order of integration is dy dx? So dy dx. Well, now I'm fixing constant x slices, and what happens? It's actually a lot simpler, isn't it? Right, so the x limits... are from negative 1 to 1, right? And the y limits, well, the first thing I'm going to hit is the blue curve, which was x squared minus 1 to, and I'm going to have 1 minus x squared is the red line, right? So this is 1 minus, or x squared minus 1, and this is 1 minus x squared. 
So that's actually a lot easier to write down. That setup is a lot nicer. So I have integral over r, f, x, y, dx, or dy, dx, is equal to, we plug in limits, negative 1 to 1, integral, and now I can just, imme I don't have to split up anything, right? I have x squared minus 1 to 1 minus x squared. And let's go ahead and plug in the function 2x plus y dy dx. So you notice that order does matter. There are situations where order does matter. And when does it matter? Well, it matters because essentially we had a crossing here of the y slices. And so if we, if we took y slices, we had to separate into two blocks, right? So it's always good to figure out which is going to be the easier path to integrate. This is by far the easier path to integrate. You don't have to worry about a sum of two things that you have to integrate. And you notice you have square roots floating around here. That's not something you generally want to deal with. This is a much nicer integral. And so generally you'll integrate this thing. And of course you should pause this video or at the end of this video just carry out this calculation and you'll, you'll see that this is actually equal to zero.